Hello, Kimmy Bible Church. It's Pastor Joel. I wanted to make another video in our online series on what does it look like to be a mature disciple of Jesus Christ. We have been going through this list in 1 Timothy 3 for our pastors, but arguing that this should be true of every single Christian. And so we're going to continue on with that today and look at the qualification of not being quarrelsome. Not being quarrelsome. Now, last week we talked about not being violent, uh, but instead be gentle. And I kind of made the argument that that is something that we should not be physically violent with people at that time. But then we're going to go one step further now today and say, no, we should also not be quarrelsome, quarrelsome. And I think that this is actually going to be speaking much more just those arguments, those verbal fights, those lashings out that we have. I think in the year 2024, it absolutely also means that we should not be argumentative online in those discussions as well. And so let's talk about that because this is an important, important issue, one that we all face here. And especially, let's just be honest, we are a few days away from a presidential election at the time that I am recording this. And so because of that, that means that probably arguments are happening literally as we speak all over the internet right now. And so um, how do we deal with that? How can we still stand firm in God's truth, but also not be quarrelsome and divisive? Because I'll be honest, this is an issue that I think many, many Christians face. And we are often uh, known as just people that are argumentative and fighting and bickering and all the time. And that's why church splits happen and all the time. And, and, and instead of being Christ like and loving. So how do we balance all of these things out? Well, to help answer that question, I want to go over to another one of the pastoral epistles. Now, there's three what we call pastoral epistles, meaning that Paul wrote these two young pastors. It's 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus. Titus is the one that I want to also flip over to today. Because in Titus, he's also giving instructions to a young pastor on how to set up his church and what does it look like to be a mature disciple of Christ and, and all of those things. And, and at the end, he's giving extra instructions instructions and he and he goes out and he says the the saying is trustworthy and I want you to insist on these things. Now the things that he is insisting on that I skipped over for sake of time in this short online video is is the essence of the gospel. He's saying, hey, you are uh, saved by faith and, and not of works. And, and those things are very important to insist on and it's worth getting in a fight over these things. It's worth even uh, causing division and, and, and losing friends over the truth of the gospel. And so he says there are some things that we should insist on, that we should fight on. And, and he says, so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. And so how we live our lives is important and we should insist on these things. These things are F excellent and profitable for people. They're worthwhile. They're useful for people to know these things. So insist on them, Titus. Fight hard for these, Titus. But then he goes on to say in verse 9 of Titus 3, but, that's Paul's word, not mine, but avoid foolish controversies. Avoid foolish ones. So there are things that we need to insist on, but there's also a lot of things that we do not just have to argue over. And then he goes on, he says, genealogies, dissensions, quarrels about the law. Now, those things are actually can be pretty important. Genealogies, that's part of the Bible, the, the law of God, that is incredibly uh, important. And, and so there are some things now where we say, but Paul, it seems like that those might be things that we should argue about, but he says, no, 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 don't, don't argue about those foolish controversies here. You know, for us, a lot of times our arguments are not over things that actually matter. They're over secondary or third argue, uh, issues, right? Uh, okay, guys, we, we can agree on 99% of the Bible, but we might have a slight disagreement. Why are you always going to that 1% to cause the division, to cause the argument? And, and that even might upset you that I just said that, right? Some of you just got angry, like, how dare he say that? And, and if you get upset at me during this video, then I might say, well, maybe this might really be applicable to you right now. Maybe you do have a quarrelsome attitude. And so I invite you just to pray about that, saying, wow, did a video just get me that angry? Why did it get me that angry? And, and so let's make sure that we're continuing to check our heart. Another way that we're constantly getting in fights right now in the year 2024, right, is the politics. <laughs> I've already mentioned it. Was, was it going to be Trump or is it going to be Harris and, and all these other issues here? And, and so what do we do? How do we stand firm on this? And because Titus, uh, the book of Titus goes on, to say, for those conversations, for they are unprofitable and worthless. <laughs> They're not even worth having those conversations. So as for a person who stirs up division, 
after warning him once or twice, have nothing more to do with him, knowing that such a person is warped and sinful and he is self-condemned. <laughs> and so that argumentative person in your life that's constantly just getting an argument, like after you say, hey, brother, let's not go into this. Hey, brother, this is a helpful for our relationship or our relationship with God. If you keep doing that and they just keep starting trying to start that fight, then at a certain point, you just have to say, hey, I'm just... I can't talk to you anymore. All we ever do is fight. And so where is that balance though? Because at the start of those verses, he said like, hey, there are some things you need to stand up for. But at the end of it, he's like, hey, but don't go into all these other worthless things. So how do we determine when is the right time to stand up for what we believe in, even if it causes a fight? And when is the right time just to say, you know what? You can you can have this one. I'm not going to get in a fight. I don't agree with you, but I'm not going to get in a fight with you on this one. Well, number one, let me just remind you, don't don't get in a fight over just your opinions on something, right? If it's your opinion or it's their opinion, all the opinions stink in my opinion, right? And so don't just keep getting in fights over things that, that really are just personal preferences. Uh, for instance, I've, I've seen people get in a fight over who had a nicer personality, Trump or Harris, right? Uh, who, who they would rather have dinner with. Why would you want to get in a fight over something as silly as that? And so first of all, just ask yourself, is this just my opinion? Like, is it am I actually able to prove uh, what I'm saying? Or is this just my personal preference? If it's just your personal preference, then then that's okay. Leave it as your personal preference, but you don't need to force that on anyone else. Second of all here, it needs to be a truth then. If it's not your opinion, it needs to be a truth, but it needs to be more than just a, a, a minor truth, but, but something that is of significance here, of significance. I can have wonderful fellowship with somebody that I agree with 99% of the Bible on, but we might have a different view of the end time. Times. Let's use that one now. Um, and, and so because of that, we, we, we fully agree on what the essence of the gospel is. We fully agree um, on, on the vast majority of how we look at scripture. But at the very end, there might be some differences because uh, just how we interpret the Bible. Now, I still believe that what I believe is fact and what I believe is true. If I did not believe that, I would want to change my opinion about the scriptures, right? And so instead, I believe that it's fact. So therefore, should I argue about it? it? Well, not necessarily. There are some things that we need to always be weighing and say, do I, is this minor disagreement more important than all the things that we do agree on? And am I willing to risk all the things that I do agree on with this person in order to try to prove to them that they're wrong on this minor disagreement? And so many things, including that in times, I'm not going to get in uh, huge fights over with people, even though I would love to talk to you about it. And I'd love to explain to you why I believe that I'm right and point that out to you in scripture. At the same time, I'm not going to risk a relationship uh, over that. If you can also say, yeah, but I'm trying to do my best to interpret the Bible too. So if we're not going to break a relationship over just our opinions, and we're not going to break our relationship over kind of a secondary issue here, um, then what about uh, if it is a major issue here, can we then go ahead and break the relationship and, and cause that argument and, and really just try to fight it out? Well, l let me just remind you one more thing here. If you are not going to change the person's opinion, then I would say don't worry about arguing. And how do I know if I'm not going to change the person's opinion? Well, if my opinion's probably not going to change, then I'm guessing that their opinion isn't either. There are certain political issues, there's certain theological issues that you could not convince me otherwise. <laughs> I have given my life over to some of these things. I've studied these things hours and hours and hours on it. I'm very confident in my stance, even though that might disagree with some very good people still. But I am very confident in that. So no matter what we do, no matter what you arguments you give me, I guarantee I've heard them before. I've watched a YouTube video. I've read the book. I've done all of that. You will not convince me no matter what. And if that is my stance on some of these issues, then I'm guessing the person that is just as passionate on the other side of the table as me, that's probably their position as well. So then if I can't actually convince them, if I can't cause anything good to come of that, then that argument at that moment is worthless. And, and in the same way that for many of us, it took maybe years and years and years of us to develop slowly and mature slowly over time to, to get to the point of where we believe these things. It will take many, many years potentially for the person that you have this disagreement to slowly change. And so you know what would actually be much more profitable, not just to argue with somebody, but to love them 
to encourage them, hopefully to have edifying smaller conversations as the years goes by. And then over the years, you will slowly be able to show them the reason why you believe this. And hopefully at that point, they'll be able to naturally see and make up their mind themselves, not just have you trying to give one liners and zingers at them so that they feel bad about their position here. And so there's those three caveats that I want to give you here. Don't fight if it's your opinion and that's it. Don't fight if it's just a minor secondary issue and don't fight if you are not going to cause any difference in the relationship at all instead. Instead, you need to be wise on what you actually pick a fight over and stand firm in. It's been said, if every hill is a hill to die on, you will not live long. Now, for some of us, we are going to need to be just like Martin Luther, which we will be celebrating here in just a few days, Reformation Day, um, where he stood in front of the Catholic Church and said, here I stand, I can do no other. He, he was going to stand firm on the gospel. We need to do that as well. But there's a lot of things that, let's just be honest, is our own pride that's kind of being raised up inside of us. And if that's the case, hey, let, let ourselves die. Let the other person have this one. You don't have to agree with them. You don't have to agree with them, but you can still love them. God bless.